Hello everyone, welcome. This is Sensual and today we're going to be creating an Omidoskin type lead. This is the way it's going to sound. Okay, so it's been one of the most requested leads, honestly. Um, many of you asked for the code, the box, the cube um, lead. So what we are going to be doing today is we're going to be creating an Omidoskin signature type lead. Um, and it's pretty much going to show you guys the techniques needed to create those big sounds that you guys hear. So without further ado, let's get started, okay? <clears throat> so for Oscillator 1, we're going to be having a PWM Pulse Saw Wave. Um, they're really notorious for, you know, being used sort of as pluckish sounds. And when I say pluckish, I don't mean like a, like a pluck, like a little one, but more like it doesn't have that much sustain to it. So... <clears throat> What we're going to be doing is we're going to put in 0 0.11. Now, this is the technique that a lot of people use in order to cover a little bit more of a frequency range, frequency range and it, it opens up the sound a little bit more. Um, just a little bit of subtle pitch can do amazing things. So, what you're going to be doing is just putting at 0 0.11, pulse out position at 11 o'clock. So, this just acts as like a volume knob for me, to be honest. The pulse width is going to be set at 11. Don't worry about the modulation right now. We'll get into that later. And the amp is going to be set at 3. The filter is going to be set a little bit above the the middle line. The reason for that is because we are going to be using two filters for this sound. <clears throat> Here we have oscillator 2 with a, another PWM wave. The pulse out is at 12 o'clock, pitch at 0 0.15. The pulse width is going to be set at <clears throat> the same as oscillator 1 around 12, one, um, between 11 and 12. And the amp is going to be set at 4, so this is going to be a little bit more louder than this one. And same thing with the filters. Now for oscillator 3, you're going to be having a square saw two wave and the wave tail position is going to be set at one <coughs> and we're going to be um, putting the pitch at 12.26 again same same technique um, it's put at 12 just to be an octave higher and that's pretty simple i'm sure everyone knows that intensity is put at 12 the amp all the way up and the filter is going to be below the middle going towards f2 <coughs> then we go into our modulation oscillator section and these are m just honestly more effects that you can use on individual oscillators like on individual sounds what we're going to be doing is we're going to putting a ring mod to oscillator 1 and we're going to set that at 3 and you're going to put the pitch at 11.98 <coughs> once you have that we go into our phase to oscillator 3 we're going to be putting that at 11 o'clock and finally we have the filter fm to oscillator 1 we're going to put that at 2 o'clock Okay, once we have that, let's go into our noise. Now, every big sound is going to need some type of noise because noise tends to make the sound sound bigger as it is. Whenever you hear an explosion, you hear the whoosh, you hear that air and it's just it's just in our head. So, you know, it's common sense you would use some noise for the big sounds. And what are we going to do is we're going to put the color all the way up, which pretty much just gets more of the higher end of the noise. And then we're going to be putting the amp at 12 and we're going to leave that in the middle. Now we're going to our feedback section, which is a technique. Um, it's hard to explain the effect, but in my head, it sounds like you're pretty much bumping the frequencies against each other. And sometimes you get a really neat distortion effect or it just makes the sound louder. We're going to be putting the feedback amp at 10 o'clock. And you're going to leave the filter in the middle. Now we go into our insert one section, which is another section for effects. So we're going to be putting a parabolic shaper. <coughs> and what that's going to do is just going to make the saw waves sound a little bit more tighter. I mean, that's what I get out of it. So we're going to put the drive at around 3, 2, between 3 and 2 o'clock, and the dry and wet a little bit after 12. For insert 2, we have the bit crush, which is a, which is a type of distortion that kind of affects more of the high end of the sound, the, the highs. And that's going to be work well in correlation with your noise, the bright noise we put. <coughs> so dry and wet and crush all the way up for that. Next, we go into filter one, which is going to be a simple low pass filter, which I don't need to explain, hopefully. And uh, the cutoff is going to be set at one, and the resonance is going to be set at around 11. Then we go into filter two, and we're going to be having a scream filter. The cutoff at nine, scream is going to be set at two, and resonance is going to be set at 10. Um, the best way to define the scream filter is just another type of distortion, but it's built in the filter. And the scream knob that you see here is going to work in correlation with the resonance. And so if the resonance all the way down, you're not going to hear that scream um, effect. So it's best to put the resonance up. That's the reason why it's up here. <coughs> okay, so once we have that, next thing we're going to do is we are going to go into our envelope one. And we are going to be putting this towards filter two. 
and I'll show you guys what it does. Um, so first off, we have the attack. So pretty much we're setting this to turn the knob. I call them turn knobs. LFOs and envelopes from Massive are pretty much just used to turn knobs at a certain rate. Envelopes work in attack, decay, sustain, release parameters, while the LFO tends to work more in the sh in the shape of a wave, and it and the knob turns at a certain rate in that in that certain way. So here we're gonna have the attack at eight level all the way up. And then we're going to have a decay of 3 o'clock, and the level is going to be at 10. Then we have a release, which is going to be set at 12, okay? So now we're going to drag this to filter 2, and pretty much we have the cutoff over here. <coughs> so if I put, um, if, if, I, if I don't put this envelope, this is how it sounds like. <coughs> sounds really <coughs> not big, but once we add that cutoff... You can see the effect that it's that it's giving. <coughs> okay, so once we have that, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into envelope three. And again, this is gonna be routed to filter one now. And we are gonna be um, putting the attack at one o'clock or two, level at eleven, decay all the way down and level all the way back. So back. We don't want it high. And then the release is gonna be set at ten. Now we're gonna route this to filter one the cutoff and we're gonna hold it and pull it up and this is the effect that gives it's really <coughs> it's barely noticeable but it's letting more of the highs out that's pretty much it and the, the reason that we are doing this and this is a mistake a lot of people make is that they don't they don't apply cutoffs because on like to filters to kind of add some movement to the sound i mean it's it's not going to be slow to the point where you can hear it, but it's going to be <coughs> it's going to give that effect like something just coming out of the box pretty much and um, it's used a lot in big sounds and technically it, when, whenever you're trying to create it just give it a try um, put those envelopes in your cutoffs and just route it up and usually it gives a really good effect now we're going to envelope 2 we want to set the attack at 3 level all the way up decay all the way up and level all the way up and then the release is going to be set a little before 12 so probably 11 o'clock and we're going to route that to <coughs> the intensity of our oscillator 3 we're going to pull that back so you're going to put 2 and then hold it and pull it back all the way and once we have that then we're going to go into our LFOs now for LFO 5 we are going to be having a cosine wave which is just the opposite of a sine wave here we have a sine and here we have just a cosine so this is going to be a cosine so it's going to go from up down up so pretty much that's the way the knobs gonna work. So we're gonna put that at rate um, the rate at two o'clock, and we're gonna route this to oscillator one. We're gonna pull it up to around two o'clock. <coughs> you're gonna route this to oscillator two as well to the pulse width of both, and same thing. And then we're gonna go into voicings, and we're gonna route the five to our wavetable position. So just put it here. You're gonna turn that on, and you're just gonna put it here, knob in the middle, and then just pull it up. And don't put it all the way up a little before it reaches the big line towards the end. So around there should be fine. Okay, once we have that, we go into level 6. Um, this one's going to be a pretty much a sine wave. And we are going to put that at a rate of 2. And we are going to set that to <coughs> our wave tail position in oscillator 3. And you're going to pull that up to 3 o'clock. So the green has to touch the 3 o'clock. Okay, so once we have that, now we can go into our voicings. And um, our voicings pretty much is where everything is set, like pretty much the characteristics of your sound. So if you want to add some detuning and all that good stuff. So we're going to put our voicing here to the max. So pretty much that's how many um, how many times this sound is going to have. So how many waves are going to be playing. So we want it at a max of 16, 16. It's going to be a monophone, monophone sound, which means you can only play one note at a time. Okay, I'm triggered at always. So we're going to turn the pitch cutoff on. We're going to set that a little bit to three, the third little line <coughs> and then <coughs> we're going to set this value here at the right to 0 0.50 i don't know if it's there by default our wavetable position we already did that <sighs> value at 100 to the side our pan position is going to be at mono because you want this to be in the center of the mix just like your bass um, technically anything loud and big just want at the center and then you want your percussion to be not mono but stereo so you know it could kind of open up the stereo field a little bit more <coughs> okay so once we have all that 
pretty much we have our vibrato at one here at 12 o'clock and our death down and it's routed to mod one i think by default so it shouldn't matter let's go into our envelope four which is routed to our amp now this envelope <coughs> pretty much is routed to the amp and the amp is where the sound comes out of so this is where you're going to give it a high release and all that good stuff so we want our attack low because we want the sound to come straight out at max volume <clears throat> so our levels all the way up our decay is going to be at 12 which pretty much decides how fast it goes down to the sustain level and our um, decay is at 12 level at 12 and our release pretty much decides how fast the sound goes back to zero i always explain this in my tutorials just in case we get some new viewers our release is going to be set at 12 a little bit before 12 and we should be good there okay so pretty much we're almost done we just need to go into our FX and our EQ so for FX one we're gonna have a reverb the size is gonna be set to around one o'clock density at three and color at two and the dry and wet knob you can move it to wherever you desire you can put a macro on it if you desire as well Okay, so for our FX2 is going to be a delay, which is going to give that knocking sound like it's bouncing from left to right. You hear it towards the end, like after the sound has been played. Um, so <coughs> we're going to set the damp at 2, feedback at 2. The left is going to be 4 over 16, while the right is 6 over 16, okay? And then we're going to route one of our macros here. It could be whichever. For me, it's going to be macro 5 and pretty much you're just going to pull it up to like around 11 and then you can control the effect how much you want of it so yeah once we have that we go into our eq section we're going to be putting a low shelf a little bit after 12 the boost at around between 2 and 3 2 30 i guess frequency at 2 high shelf at 1 o'clock so once we have all that you should be getting the sound And as always, guys, I'm putting this preset up on uh, my Facebook. You can find it in my downloads tab. The the link is in my in my description. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was really helpful. I know I went a little bit all over the place, but these sounds are really, really hard to create. And um, and yeah, at the end, it just pays off. Anyways, guys, please make sure to subscribe, hit like, check out my other tutorials. Hopefully, there's other sounds you guys like, and I'll see you guys next time.